everybody, it's Claire here, back from being down by the beach with my friends Alan and Janet. Had a lovely walk for two and a half hours, blew the cobwebs away. We walked along from San Pedro across into Puerto Banus, so that was really nice. Stopped and had a hot chocolate and then walked all the way back again. So yeah, that's good. I did stop off at the Merceria as well, which is the haberdashery shops here in Spain. and managed to pick up a zip because I'd only got a pale blue one myself in my stash. Um, now the only thing is this is the only length that she got which is about 14 inches but I have measured it against the back of my dress here and I think if that starts at the top and down the bottom here I think that'll be just about long enough for me hopefully to be able to get that on. So we're going to go with that and um, unfortunately I have found that over here in Spain don't seem to have access to the full range of haberdashery and other shops. I know it seems daft because we're a European country and it should be easy, but for some reason you just don't get so much. The other thing is that a lot of the fabrics are polyester orientated and I do prefer my natural fibres, but um, as I say, you do have to look through far, few and far between, but I thought it'd all be a wash with um, the viscoses and the linens, especially and printed linens in all colours and designs but no not 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 in my experience anyway that's not what's happening but um anyway i digress um we're on to the skirt now so we've got our bodice all all here ready and waiting and it just needs a skirt so let's crack on with that i'm going to sew the skirt in the instructions it has you sew the skirt panels together we left our skirt front on a fold if you remember and then um, I'm going to stop 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 doing my zip um, and then I'm going to um, just sew the front panels to the side panels I'm going to use um, French seams on those because I think that'll be the best thing for this fabric which is going to be a bit fraying and I'm also going to do the same on the lining as well so takes a little bit longer but as you might be getting to know with me I think it's worth the effort and it's going to produce a really lovely garment so bear with me apologies for the barking dog again it must be walk time um but um yeah if I if I wait until it's all quiet here then obviously it'll take me twice as long to do this video so um let's just carry on and we'll get on with it so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to shut sew my front skirt to my side panels first and I'm going to do the same with the lining so I'm doing the same steps with the lining as I go along so that I don't get to the point where I've got an almost finished dress and then I then have to start and work on the lining the other thing that I've done before when I've been dressmaking is sometimes I make the lining up first and that way then you can actually learn how the pattern goes together and also do a trial fit before you actually get to work with your fashion fabric so on this one I haven't because the bodice needed to be made up the way that it has been um, but as I say I'm just just doing things as I go along so I'm going to show you how to do a French seam um, it's it's not that fiddly but it is interesting because as you, people know from my channel I'm a multi-discipline sewer so I do like to do cross stitch and I like to do embroidery and I also like to do um, quilting and so I'm going to use my rotary cutter and my quilting ruler in my um, French seam construction because I found that's a really good way to actually make the cut to neaten off the edge ready for for sewing it um i don't want to use an overlocker at all because i think it's going to be bul bulky and and we've, we've got such a beautiful garment that why, why why would we do that so yes if you if time's an essence then that's fine but for me it isn't i and my time's my own so i can um i can indulge myself in, in what I want to do so so let's carry on with that then and um, we'll get on with what we're doing and um, the other thing is as well I didn't mention this t-shirt this t-shirt is um, the wanted t-shirt by Vanessa Pouze so it's got this lovely square neckline on a band um, and she shows you how to do it so it's a two-piece band that you sew first then you attach this bit first before you then sew the the, the um, it round the back it's got long sleeves and actually I used a cover stitch machine on this for the first time and I'm actually now saving up for a cover stitch machine. So that'll be my next next purchase, hopefully, but I digress. Anyway, so if you wanted to see that, that was the Vanessa Pouze, um t-shirt. Now the instructions for that are in, in French, but it's got pictures. So as long as you can follow the pictures and work it out from there, then, then it's not a problem. So first off, let's get our skirt together. I'll turn the camera around so you can see what I'm doing and we'll get started. So thank you for joining me again. Okay, so I've identified my skirt front and here we've got our lovely box pleats. Now they're actually the front, so the boxier side is the front. Hmm. Yes, no, that's the, so the bit with the, with the, where you can actually see the folds of the 
um, pleats is the back and that nice clean bit is the front. So I'm going to lay that down face side up. Then I have my skirt sides here and we need to make sure that we get the right side. Now one side is, is slightly curved when I hold that up, slightly curved on this side. So I know that's my hip um, seam. So that one's going to go across to here. So wrong sides together to start off with. So that means that the nice pleats are on the outside. And then I'm going to use my pins. And what I'm going to do is just sew a narrow seam all the way down here. Now the total seam allowance that's been allowed is half a, an inch. So we need to make sure that if we, because what we're going to do is we're going to sew these wrong sides together first. So sew along here. And then what we're going to do is then trim that seam back slightly because then we're going to press the seam backwards on itself like that and then we're then going to sew it again and that makes the end, end, um, raw edges of your seam, cut edges of your seam inside. So we need to make sure that each time we're not going over a quarter of an inch because otherwise we'll be reducing the size especially at the waistline. So we do need to just be careful of that. The other thing you can do is you can actually allow extra on your seam allowance when you're cutting out if you wanted to. But whichever way you do it, that is absolutely fine and down to your choice. So it's going to match these edges up together. It's a straight edge, no bias, so we don't need too many pins, just enough just to keep us on track. See, I do go quiet when I'm pinning, don't I? Okay, match any notches up that you come across you've transferred from your pattern. And there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to sew this down to narrow seam allowance edge. It is a floaty fabric, so you do have to be careful. I have got the walking foot on my sewing machine to help me with that. So hopefully that should help and stop it from disappearing inside. So just double check that you have got your wrong sides together. And I have both I can tell that because of the edges of the pleats are there. Okay, so that's the first thing that I'm going to do. So let me go off and do that, and then I will come back and show you what we do next. Okay, so just by moving my needle, I've managed to get a really nice thin seam on here. It's probably about two eighths of an inch. If I've got my seam gauge, I wanted it to be, oh, it's just over an eighth of an inch. That's perfect then, because that's, oh, can't see there. So it's just over an eighth of an inch, which is great. It does help having a, a, a new needle in your machine, a new sharp needle in your machine. And this fabric isn't fraying too much, but we're still going to um, press it and we're still going to trim it because we don't want any little whiskers showing through into our, our fabric. So the next stage now is that I'm just going to um, press this flat, just set the seam and make sure that sort of thing. And then I'll come back and just show you how I trim that with my um, rotary cutter and my um, quilting ruler. So for those that you that don't quilt, this is a rotary cutter. You might have seen them on some YouTube videos and what have you. This inside here is a really razor blade sharp um, cutting disc um, and it has a safety lock feature so that if you slide the presses in and slide it back, you'll see the edge of the rotary cutter is then exposed. There are some that um, you can clutch on the handle and that then releases the blade. Um, the thing to remember about these is that they will cut anything that's in, in their direction um, and you know there's regular horror stories of people taking off the ends of the fingers or um, slicing bits and there's certainly not anything to be used when you've got children around so really these should be kept under lock and key but I don't have any children around so that's all good. Only the husband and he doesn't touch it which is good. Um, and so then the other thing that we've got here is we've got a quilting ruler. Um, these are really hard plastic and quite thick, about a quarter of an inch thick, and it gives a really nice edge for the rotary cutter to run, run against. You can't use an ordinary ruler with a rotary cutter, ask me how I know, um, and because it does tend to cut into it and you'll chunk bits out of it. But these aren't that expensive um, and they are definitely worth having. Um, and what I really like about it is that, that it's got some really nice small measurements on it. So the one that we're going to be using is this first one just here, which is an eighth of an inch. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to line that dotted line there up against the sewn line that we've just done on our seam and anything over it I'm going to use the rotary cutter to snip off and then that will give us a nice clean seam then as you'll see for the next stage. So easy done just you have to have a self-healing um, cutting mat as well to use it with which is what this green thing here is I just leave it under my machine and I can use it to cut out on. I'm just going to rest my ruler on top of my thing and on uh, top of my um, fabric and my, my seam I've just done and I'm just going to really try not to be too bothered about going too far up and along my seam. On this one it's going quite straight but if you've got a curved edge just, just do an inch at a time if you need be and um, you actually put your quilting ruler over the top of the fabric that you're wanting to protect so you'd always have the excess over the edge that you want to cut off just in case you get nudged or you go sideways you don't want to go and snip into it because believe me anything that's underneath this this blade will be cut off so you wouldn't want to have your ruler this way for example and just be trying to trim off the edge because you could quite easily disappear so always have your ruler over the top of what you're trying to protect and then what i'm going to do is line that up on the seam and then really hold your, make an arch with your fingers and press your weight on it to hold that down still so it doesn't move. Release the safety catch and then I'm just going to do a little cut all the way along. And you'll see the amount that I'm taking off is fairly minuscule. So if I just move that back, let me move you in closer so you can see. Hold on. Okay, so if you can see, this is what I've just taken off, which isn't very much at all. But that was what would have poked through the other side of the seam if we hadn't taken it off. And if you have a look there, it's a beautifully straight and nice and clean cut. So let's move our fabric down a little bit more. We'll just do a bit at a time again. Take your time. There's no rush with any of this. Let's move it over here a bit more. You might be able to see better. Okay. Still trying to get the camera angles right, but... Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Ruler back on top again with the bulk of the ruler over the top of what I'm trying to protect fabric wise. And then you then position this quarter of an inch dotted line here on the sewn line. You can see he stitches through the clear perspex. Trying to get it so it's straight. It isn't straight always. So I'm just going to do a bit at a time. So let's just do a couple of inches at a time because I can see it's straight to about here. So let's just do that bit to start off with. So again, pressure on the on the ruler, and then we're just taking away that smallest smidge. And again, we've got a little bit of a curve here where we've got for the um, hip. Just make sure all your fabric is folded up, and you've only got your your um, seam sticking out, because otherwise it will take it off. A bit more and what it gives you is a nice thin edge for for the next stage of doing our French seams as I say it just takes it off the, all those whiskers because they can all show through so again not taking off much just a little bit in order for us to be able to do the seam so what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to press this seam allowance to one side like this with the with the iron and then I'm going to press the seam again like this so that that sewn seam there is right on the edge of my stitches on the edge just there so it's all pushed through to the other side all the time especially if you've got a really fraying fabric you need to be careful that you don't rook up this edge whilst you're just trying to do this bit so treat it gently and it, sh it should all be well and I'll bring it back to you and show you how I've done it once I've pressed it. So this is what I mean by the seam. So we're just having that just press so it's right on the edge. And that will then allow us now to come across about a quarter of an inch and just sew up and we'll then miss the seam allowance that's inside here. Oh, open it up. So there's our um, seam in there at the moment. And we're going to push this back in on the edge there and then sew her down about a quarter of an inch and that should miss that eighth of an inch we've got there and then give us a nice seam here to then be able to to enclose, 
enclose and encase <laughs> all of those raw edges. So that's um, that's what we do with the French seam. So let me just sew that down and then I'll bring it back and just show you once it's finished. Okay, so there we go. That's our seam just sewn there at quarter of an inch down with the um, edge there. And then if we go on the inside, so the inside, this is what we will actually see on the outside of the fabric because the inside is the actually the outside top layer of the fabric. So it's beautiful um, crisp, crisp seam line. And then on the inside, which is the last seam that we've done, you can see that your seam is perfectly encased there. So that's a really nice finish to have. Okay, so I'm just going to go now and attach the other side skirt panel and then I'm going to do the same with the lining as well. Um, with the lining, I'll make sure that the seams are actually going to be on the inside so that both lots of French seams are together on the inside of the garment and that the the inside of the dress um, where the lining is that will be seen is actually is not going to have the se French seam on it. <laughs> Complicated, sorry. I'll explain when I show you, but basically I want the bo both the inside of the skirt and the inside of the lining to be touching and these inside seams here to be the same on both of those. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's what I'll do next, then I'll come back to you. Okay, it's a little bit later now and um, I have now finished doing all the French seams on the skirt and I have now matched up my lining to my top fabric. I've matched up as much as I can do of the pleats so that they're all matched in and I've just put these pins in just to hold those in place. So first of all I matched up the side seam and used that as a as a match point on both sides. Now for mine what I've realised is that the instructions actually aren't for a lined skirt it's just for a lined bodice so if you wanted to put a lining on a skirt this is probably a good good lesson then then for you for everybody who wants to do that for those who don't want to line the skirt then just carry on with the instructions as they are normally but what I've done is I've put my lining up against my skirt this is all open at the back now this is the back centre back seam which is still open until we've got our zip in um, and I say just match those up centre front and then the side seams and then the rest should just all, all fit in together quite nicely actually it, it is, does just all match up it's the same pattern pieces so I'm just laying one on top of the other now when I do sew this in I'm going to sew, probably tack this to get um, on a big stitch on my um, machine first because I don't want to be battling holding these two layers together when I'm trying to add it onto the bodice so I'm going to just run along. Now, the only thing is I'm going to leave about this last inch. I mean, there I've got my selvage edges. I'm going to cut those off when I do my French seam on the back. Um, but but so ignore that bit. But what this last inch of the actual um, skirt, I'm going to leave open and unattached. Because what I want to do is I want to slot the zip in before then I finish it off. And I, I'm trying to remember how I've done it before because I have done it before. So it is possible. But I'm just trying to remember how to do it. And I think that what I actually have to do is leave that last inch, inch and a half, say, of the skirt. So don't sew right up to the edge of the skirt. Just leave the last inch and a half unsewn. And then I'll show you what to do when we do with the bodice. So, OK, it's a few of an extra tips. And I know we're going off piece a little bit, but um, bear with me and hopefully it'll all make sense. So next steps now is just to sew a tack and stitch along here inside the seam allowance that will that will be and that will just hold all of the, those two layers together and then it'll be much easier then when we're attaching the bodice to the back of it um, and onto, onto the next stage so i'll be back to you in a second when i've done that so what i've just noticed is that in a lot of places my um, tacking stitches have held my pleats together so like this one here is really nice where i've just tacked it through on the top but i've got one down here where it's slightly open like that. Can you see there's a gap between the fabric? Now, I'm not happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is just undo with a quick unpick. And I should have got the quick unpick before I went on this camera. And I'm just gonna undo those tacking stitches because that's not how I want it to be. I was controlling that I'd got the lining fabric on the top, so it just, and what's happened is those tacking stitches have just pulled apart when I've been working with the skirt. So just thought it was a good opportunity to show you what to do if that happens to you because it's something that can easily happen. So I'm just taking out the tacking threads. 
what I'm going to do now is make sure this pin there so that those are now together so there's no gap between them and I'm going to have the top fashion fabric on top as I re-sew this and this is what I was saying to you about tacking those pleats in the first place because actually the majority of them are okay And I'm happy with them, so it has worked. It was worth the extra time, but if we've only got one that we just need to adjust, then I'm happy with that. I'll call that a sewing win, I think. Okay, so I've just pinned that so that that's now sitting straight together. I'll take it back to my sewing machine. I'm on a, a stitch length five for this. And I'm just literally just going to join those stitches back up again. As long as it's smooth on the outside, I'm not too fussed what my lining's doing at this stage. So I'm just going to make sure that those stitches, that little odd here, I can just pull that in, just pull that together. I'm going to show you this, trim my threads, so you can see there now that one's much better than it was and I'll just be careful when I'm putting that together because you want these pleats to be touching, that's what I should do, that one there is not so good either. I think what's happened is the stitch, the, um, the threads have just pulled apart slightly. Just tighten it up on my tacking threads and then re sew that little bit. And so, making sure that they're together. Sometimes just the pressure on having the on, on the sewing machine can just from the feed dogs, which is why I'm using my walking foot. Just to make it easier. But I just thought I'd let you know that it sometimes does go a little bit in this, but there we go. So I've mended that one as well. Happy with that one. That's okay. Yeah, happy with the rest of them. Right, okay, so I've left the um lining open this last inch and a half, that side, and also on this side here. And you'll see why in a few minutes. It's gonna feel a bit weird what I'm gonna to suggest to do, but it'll make sense as we go through. So next, what we're gonna do now is just gonna take your bodice, ignore the lining for the moment, we don't need that bit for now, and then find where you've got your side seams your lining and your bodice and then we're going to match that so again hold your seams apart and just roll them together until you get it on the seam allowance just put a pin either side of those so that's our first match point then going to go across to the other one and find the other place where the um, lining seam allowance is here you can see your seam line there where you've done your French seams and just lie that one on top as well. So the stitches have got to match where the stitches have got to match where the seam line is going to be, our half inch seam allowance. But we can do that. That's easy. Move your clothes, pins a bit closer, Claire, rather than reaching for them. Okay. Now the skirt should now just lie across. So if we look for, if we fold our two side seams together, that's going to give us our middle point for both our bodice and for the skirt. So make sure that's even. That's our next match point. You might have a notch there as well that you can match up. So let's put those together. And now, if there is any difference in the width, we can just I can hear you shouting at the screen, split the difference, so that we ease that in across the end of the sew. So matching our edges up, just keep splitting that difference to put your pins in. Make sure you are happy. Yep. Try to get my 
happens. We'll have a marathon tacking thread taking out session in a bit, aren't we? When we're getting all these together. So again, this is sitting together beautifully. So just make sure you don't create any puckers anywhere. Just want this all to sit together beautifully whilst we sew it together. And then we're going to be putting our zip in. So once I've finished with this, oh, no we're not. First thing first is I want to put a waist stay in this dress as well. Now a waist stay, just make sure your ends are matching up as well. Keep that, that lining free at the moment. So you're gonna have a pin at the end here Keep flitting around don't I sorry Claire concentrate right so you've got your lining free you're going to pin just before the edge of that because we're going to stop sewing at that same point and then we're going to start again just sewing this fabric here to the to the bodice so we're going to sew 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 to the end of our tacking stitches that you can see there and stop back tack and stop we're then going to fold this lining out of the way and then we're going to put our needle back in this side of the lining and then we're going to carry on. So this is just at the end of the um, bodice where the bodice meets the um, skirt but at the end at the centre back seam because we want that lining in the end to fold backwards and to cover the edge of the zip when we've sewn that in. So that's why we're keeping that little bit flapping at the moment. So don't worry, it'll all make sense when you... If you watch the end of the video first before you attempt it, then you'll actually see what I'm what I'm saying we need to do. And then hopefully it should create a well the aim is that it will create a nice neat um finish. So yes, to go back. So we're going to sew this together first, then I'm going to add the waist um stay in because what that will do is that will mean that um, as you're sitting in the skirt, sometimes you get like pull marks and stretch marks on, on the um, fabric itself. And so by adding some grow grain ribbon, and I'll show you that when we get it, um, I've got some inch, I think it is inch and a half thick, um, grow grain, and we put um, a strip in into the dress and it will just, um, we'll, we'll attach it into the bottom here and then, it'll and, and then just secure it at the top. Um, it'll all make sense. Um, because it'll just stop that. There's no give in a grow grain ribbon at all, like zero. So we know that when we've got that skirt on, it's a bit like wearing a cincher. It doesn't necessarily make you look any thinner, but it just stops any pulling on the skirt itself, which will then over time just make your skirt look baggy and horrible. So I tend to do this in all of my waistbands um, and all of us get, oh, look there, look, this is why we tack them down. So these ones weren't tacked down, so I'm going to redo that bit. Just take out these stitching. Because my lining fabric, if you remember, wasn't quite wide enough for me to cut a full um, length out, so I've had to play around with my pleats on the lining. So what I've done is I've just loosened off those tacking stitches. Just going to pull this lining up to lie flat against here now. Which way does it need to go? Probably needs to go that way actually. That's better. And then I'm just going to put a few extra pins in just here to make sure that's going to hold nicely for me. I feel like a detective sometimes, don't you, on all of this sewing? There's so many bits and bobs and techniques and things to remember. All worthwhile though if it gives us a lovely dress at the end of it. At the moment it's looking like a big bag of poofiness so I'm hoping it's not going to be too poofy when I put it on. Right okay so we've got a lovely inside of the waistband you can see here and then we've got both layers of the skirt and the lining this side so that's what's giving it the extra volume there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here but leave, leave this bit free you see that latches up to the end of the centre back is the same. So I'm going to leave that bit free at the moment. I'm just going to sew all the way through where I'm going through my lining and my fabric together. And then I'll just pop back at the end 
and just sew that onto there. Now I'm using a proper stitch, it's not um, a tacking stitch now, we only use the tacking stitch while we were just putting the skirt linings together to the main skirt and that was all that we did. So I'll pop back in a second when we've done that, hopefully it's all made sense. Um, if not, just pop me some questions down below and I'll try and help you a bit more, but hopefully it all makes sense. Okay, so I've just sewn along here using my standard 2.2 um, thread, um, stitch length, and you can see that's going all the way along here, most of that looking all fine. Let's just have a look and make sure that we've not got any hookers on our bodice at all. It doesn't matter if you can see the tacking threads, I'm happy with that at the moment. Okay, that all looks smooth so far. it all the way along side seams matching up nicely okay yeah no I'm happy with that I'm not going to undo any of that so that's good so what I want to do now is just at these ends here is I'm just going to hold my lining out of the way and I'm just going to now sew through the skirt fabric and the um, bodice fabric bodice waistband so hold that out of the way. There's a little bit of a pleat there, but I'll just go over that. Now, it's really important that you get the same seam allowance on this side as you do on the other, because we need the depth of this waistband to be identical on both sides. Otherwise, when we attach our zip, it's going to be different. So be really careful when you're coming to the edge of here that you keep to your um, half inch seam allowance so that, as I say, that once we've done that seam allowance, the waistband should be identical um, in width for attaching our zip in. So that's the next bit that we're going to be doing at the moment. So let's just sew this now. So I'm going back up to where those tacking stitches are, measuring it up on the side of my, and just going through the skirt. Nice and carefully. I'm she making some funny noises? Don't quite know why. It's not puckered on the back, so that's okay. So what we actually have, if we look on this side, you can see that we've got stitches here. We've got a little gap there and stitches. And if I'd have got that quite perfect, those stitches would almost have only a hair's breadth difference between them because we don't want any gap here. So you can see there's a little bit of a gap. So I'm just going to just tighten that up a little bit to make sure that at the point at which I then, so I'm just put pin in there, so the point at which my stitching there finishes. It's going to be, there's going to be no gap, so can you see there's just a small gap there, so I'm just going to do that bit now. Put your pin the other way, Claire, and then you'll be able to take it out and see it a bit better. Okay, and then there's no stitches there, but the bodice is again stitched just there. I think it makes sense to you, hopefully it does. So yeah, so when we now fold this open, there's no gap in the waistband. It's all sewn together all nicely. But we can see that this bit of lining here is free. And that's what we need. Because when we sew our zip in, on the back here, after we've sewn the zip in, we're then going to fold this across the other way. And that will then enclose close the, the um, zip in at the end. So let's go on to the other side and just do this on the other side. So we have, I'll take the pin out, you will be able to see. So we've got our bodice attached to our main fabric here. And then we've got the lining attached most of the way, but then it's just free at that last bit. Ignore the pleat, um, that's, that'll just get um, caught down as well. So that'll allow us to work on the zip with the lining being free. 
bodice of course was all free as well so that's all still not attached so that might be confusing you a little bit but the, the, we've not done the bodice yet we're going to do the bodice in the end we'll fold that back slightly and then I tend to hand sew um, the bodice lining down because we want that bodice lining will eventually go down and we'll cover all of those stitches to give us a lovely clean inside but for now we are going to look at attaching our waist stay inside here and we're going to attach it just to the top of this skirt here and that will then just um, make that work and give us that rigidity so just bear with me a second while I get my grow grain and I'll show you what that is okay, so this is the grow grain ribbon that I've got this is the one that I've got if that helps anybody with any details it's about an inch wide yeah it's an inch wide this one's black, which is why I also used the black um, interfacing just on the waistband pieces just to give that some stiffness because it was so fine with the bit being viscose. Now it is less than the waistband width thickness, but I'm I'm not bothered about that. Let's put it on this side, you'll be able to see. So there's the waistband when it's finished and it's less wide than that. But it's it's just to give that rigidity. I mean, there's just no giving this. It's so strong. Honestly, nothing's gonna get, get through this. Um, and, oh, there's a piece there. Is that gonna be long enough? I've used a piece for something else. Let's just measure it along the edge. So we don't want to gather up any of the stitches. We just want to try and stop it from stretching out. Ooh, ooh, that was lucky, wasn't it? That just, just fits. So let me just put this away for now, pinning it. It is worth getting this. If you can get it by the roll, then that is something to get by the roll. So let's find the centre point first. Okay, and let's put a pin in there. So I've just put the two ends together just to find the centre point. Let's find the centre of the dress. So put the two princess side princess seams together as well. Oh, where are we? No, that's not the right one. That's the right one. Princess seams together, that's going to give us that, and it should be in the middle of a, of a pleat, which it is. And I'm just going to take this grow grain ribbon, and that needs to go in there. So, I'm going to fold it so that the grow grain ribbon is just okay. So, let's show you how I've done this. So this is where we've attached the skirt and that's the seam we've just done where we've sewn to attach the skirt and the lining to the bodice. What I've done is I've just rested the grow grain ribbon up against those stitches holding um, it together because what I want to do is sew it along there so that you're not going to see it through on the, on the right side of the garment. We don't want any stitching for it on the right side of the garment here but we do want it just to be anchored down there. So what I'll do is then trace this up backwards, putting in some more pins. I'm not stretching anything, I'm just, just letting it lay against it. I'm going to put those in at the sideways because I've not got a lot, we've only got a seam allowance really to rely. And I want it just to sit just the to the seam allowance side of those stitches. Because we don't want it to, so when we fold it, when it gets folded in like this, we don't want it to create any bulk. So just like that. Oh, pin can't go through. Just give it a little twist and it should go through. Because we've got so many layers we're working with. I'm just laying it against it. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll attach this in when we've finished doing our, when we do our zip. And it'll just be like a, a waist stay or a waist tie, but it just adds a bit of structure to that waist so that when you sit down, you've not got any fear of your stitches popping on your waistband because the grow grain ribbon will take all of the strain. Bit of magic really, isn't it? So again, I'm just gonna attach this just to the end where we did our stitches before because we don't want to sew that lining bit down. We want to make sure that this is going right up to the edge but not got any of the lining in with it. And then, as I say, when we stitch that in and fold it back, you won't even know it's there um, on the outside at all, but it'll just give that um, strength to that seam. I 
as I say, just make sure you don't pucker any of your seams. I might stretch it at all, and this piece is just long enough. Another one of those little tricks that are just really worthwhile having. So again, we want to go up to where the lining is stopped. That's there. So I've got to sew all shout at me when I start to sew this to make sure that I don't sew off the end. Okay. So there we go. It's right up to the edge there. You could, I mean, ideally I'd have added a little bit extra, I think, but um, because I'm using a piece that I'd already got cut, then it was fine. I'm going to just start here where, this, where the lining is free. We'll come back and stitch that bit, a, bit afterwards. And I'm just going to just try and be careful not to catch any of the skirts. So keep pulling all your skirt down away from where you're sewing so you don't catch any of this going up and we're just going to sew it so that it's just sitting inside the seam allowance just on top here i'll come back afterwards and show you we don't need to match the thread to the black i'm just going to use the blue thread that i'm already using so you'll be able to see it when i've finished um because you're not going to see it from the outside anyway so it's it's just that little bit of insurance okay back in a minute so what you can see is that i've just sewn this down along here as you can see the row of stitches just here so that's the side, that's the, the row of stitches that was attaching the waistband onto the bodice because this seam here is going to get pushed up like that when we sew it. And what I'm going to do is just put a couple of little stitches like here where the seam allowance, once this is all pressed, because we're going to go ahead and press this waistband in a minute and press that so that it's the seam allowance is going up. And then what we can do is we can just do some little tacking stitches that just go through the seam allowance, just at the side seams, princess seams here as well, or just um, where the side seams are for attaching the, the, the bodice. Um, you know, this is the underarm seam, isn't it? And that'll just stop it from flicking over when it's being worn. So again, you won't see those stitches. And as I can say, it's not, it's not the full width of the waistband, but that doesn't matter because again, you won't really see it from the, from the other side. It's all going to be hidden. So that's the next stage that we've done. So I'm going to press this so the seam allowance is laying nice and flat. I might just tack it so that it stays up already so that I've got it done and I don't forget to do it. And then we're then ready to put our zip in. Well, folks, we have one very rustly, fluffy skirt with all the um, lining in it. I've just pressed this up now so the lining's um, sitting still, sitting still, sitting um, flat. I'm going to take out these um, tacking threads here later on. There'll be a bit of a while, while you're watching TV kind of moment. We just want to make sure everything's all pressed nicely 